Welcome to Your Daily Dose, a devotion ministry of the Faith Baptist Church of Franklin and Middletown, Ohio. Thanks for joining us each weekday as we share God's Word with you. It's your daily prescription for all that ails you. And now, Your Daily Dose. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Your Daily Dose. Glad that you've joined us again uh, for this special time. And uh, this is going to be a little bit different than my uh, usual devotion, but uh, i got to get something off of my chest. Um, every now and then you just feel led of the Spirit to do it. Uh, over the last several years, there have been some pretty notable people of the faith. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about independent fundamental Baptist types, but, but there's a few of them there too who have denounced their faith. Just in the last two years, I can point to you over 30 different men who were everything from small church pastors to mega church pastors to authors, uh, advice givers, pretty, I thought, astute dividers of the scriptures who seem to have lost their way. And, and it's not because they uh, necessarily fell into sin, but they've come now to the point where they've completely renounced their faith. Interestingly enough now, there's a, uh, there's a slang term that's being used to kind of classify this phenomenon. It's called deconstructing their faith. Now, last night I was reading an article about a uh, comedy duo. Uh, they're mainly on the internet, on YouTube. They go by the names of Rhett and Link. Uh, these guys go back uh, 20 years or so, and if you turn back the clock that far, you'll find them as evangelists in the Campus Crusade for Christ, now a, an ecumenical organization as it is, but had its roots in the Southern Baptist Convention. But once upon a time, not only were they believers, but they were full-time evangelists who had a bent towards the, the younger population, and, and they steered quite a few people to Christ. But about 15 years ago, they left the world of evangelism to go into show business. Now today, these two are probably one of the more prominent comedy duos of their time. And if you've ever seen them, if you ever looked at their YouTube videos, whatever, I don't suggest that you do, but they always, for some reason, kind of struck me as Christians. Uh, I mean, but they're, um, well, I don't know how to say it, they're, they're hipsters. But, you know, I don't know what else you can say about that. Uh, <laughs> but they, they, they have a certain quality about them that they're, they're not dirty. They don't work blue. At least I've never heard anything uh, like that. They have a, a daily YouTube show that's actually pretty entertaining. But the other day, I don't even remember how I ran across it. I listened to one of their podcasts. It's sort of an offshoot of uh, their work on YouTube. And I was devastated by what I heard. Then I read a pretty lengthy article written by Shelby Abbott, who served alongside of them when they were part of the Campus Crusade back in the day. And then it hit me. Sometimes, and I, I would venture to say that this is almost all of the time in our culture today, success in the material world acceptance by the mainstream of our culture and of our society, the ability to be non-offensive, non-threatening, uh, and frankly, non-Christian, well, you know what, it's just easier. It's easier because it's not controversial. It's not offensive. Daniel Patrick Moynihan was a senator from New York back uh, in the 80s and, and 90s. Uh, not only was he a politician, he was a sociologist as well. He put us very perfectly when he wrote an op-ed back in 1993, I think it was. He said that we were defining deviancy down. In other words, we're moving the bar in the wrong direction, away from what we considered to be, once upon a time, deviancy from the common moral and common decency of our society. He was right, and that was 1993. He died in 2003. 
imagine what he would say today if he saw our culture and our world. There's been other notables out there who have done this very same thing. Uh, one, and I don't, mean, I don't just mean to pick on him, but Joshua Harris, he wrote a couple of books on dating and sex and marriage and different things. And um, Now, I never, don't, don't get me wrong, I never gave him credence before he renounced his faith. Uh, after he wrote a couple of those books, he became the pastor of a huge mega church. But last year, he bowed to the pressure of the world. He bowed to the, the women's cultural movement that's going on, uh, the war on women, as it were. By the way, it's not our side that's, that's having the war. Uh, and bowed to the LGBTQ, RST, UBW, XYZ community. And, and if you say, how do you know that he bowed to these pressures? It's because he wrote about it. He kind of had his own mea culpa and, and wrote this piece. And he apologized for preaching the Word of God. Yes, my friends, pastor of a huge megachurch apologized for holding fast to the Scripture, apologized for preaching against homosexuality, preaching against uh, homosexual marriage and the like. And I will tell you this, I've never apologized for God's Word, not once. Now, that being said, I'm not going to tell you that I always like what it says, because that's the Holy Spirit convicting me. I understand that. But you know what? I'm not going to apologize for what God has already settled. Now you may say, hey Bob, that's a really nice rant. <laughs> but this is a daily dose. Give me something that, you know, that I can apply to my life. All right, here you go. The Apostle Paul, who is uh, undoubtedly my favorite of the apostles, uh, mainly chosen because we have so much of his writing, we can really kind of get a glimpse into the mind of the man himself. But he wrote, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. You know what? I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the word. I'm not ashamed to say that I'm a Christian. I'm not afraid to say the ways of the world are not the ways of God. I refuse to deconstruct my faith. Now that being said, if the word of God stings, well, you know, it's just like the old honeybee. What has happened is you've stepped away from God. You've invaded the world's territory. And let me tell you something, when you've done that, you're going to get stung. If the word of God singes, <laughs> just like fire, you're too close to the flames of the world, and you're going to get burnt. If the word of God stabs, well, you know what? Just like a sword, what happens is you play too close to the edge of the blade, and you're going to get cut. Now, I've said that to say this. You might make a decision to deconstruct your faith to roll over to the whims of this world, where God is nothing more than this mere magical uh, throwaway concept. But first, let me tell you something, you can't deconstruct creation. I find it very interesting that almost 100% of these men who have walked away from their faith, who deconstructed their faith, None of them are dumb enough to deny the existence of a sovereign, almighty God, a creator of all things, and that as his creation, we're to worship him. These deconstructors always stop short of making that kind of a statement. They say things like, well, I'm still trying to work it out, or somebody told me there's another way to worship, or there's another way to... You know why they don't make those statements is because they still understand the severity of making such a statement. You know what? You might not like it, but you can't deconstruct creation. Secondly, you can't deconstruct condemnation. I, I, I love teaching the book of Romans. I've done it a couple of times as a Sunday school teacher. There's so much to unpack that, that Paul wrote to us there, but that being said, the first two chapters, it's always interesting when I teach it because there's a common misunderstanding amongst Christians uh, that 
somehow it's our sin, the sins we personally commit, that condemned us to hell. Well, my friend, that's just simply not so. Now, our sin can separate us from the Father, but it's not our sins that condemned us to hell. We were born condemned. Now, if you want to read more about that, I suggest the first two chapters of Romans. It would be pretty enlightening for you. You know, but you can't undo your own condemnation. Paul made it quite clear. And these people out there who deconstruct their faith, what they're really trying to do is they're trying to rewrite history, to give themselves a clear conscience about leaving the faith. You know what? You might not like it, but you can't deconstruct your condemnation. Thirdly, you can't deconstruct the crucifixion. You know, <laughs> it's just a fact Jesus existed. Even secular history, secular history records this man of Nazareth, the Galilean, Jesus. He was born of a virgin with such a humble birth in a stable, laid in a manger, and years later, brutally, brutally crucified for our sins to free us from that condemnation. Well, you couple that with the resurrection. What, a, what an amazing story, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the greatest gift ever given to the world. You know what? You may not like it, but you can't deconstruct the crucifixion. And lastly, I have a message for those people who have walked away from the faith. Unless you were just never saved, unless you never truly trusted Christ, never truly repenting of your sin, you know what? You can't deconstruct your salvation. Praise God that his salvation for us dirty, rotten sinners can't be undone. It reminds me of the threefold chord Solomon spoke of in Ecclesiastes. You know, you couple that with the, the doctrine of adoption, we become the children of God. We get intertwined in those th in that threefold chord, never to be let loose, never to be alone, never just you and me. We're intertwined with the eternal triune God. And you can't just unravel that. My friend, you may not like it, but you can't deconstruct your salvation, even if you walk away from it. I know it's a different message today for sure, but it's as e but I don't want to say this, it's easy as a Christian. We're in the world. We may not be of the world, but we're in the world. We hear all the different voices around us. Especially today, now we've got this, this cancel culture that's come up in the last few years. Uh, you can't even stand fast for your faith at work without getting fired. Uh, there's people being fired all over the news. You just read the stories, it's there. Heck, in some circles, like out in Hollywood, just being a conservative politically can get you cut off from an entire industry. But you know, the Word of God is clear. We should be like the Apostle Paul. Unashamed of the gospel, unashamed of our convictions, unashamed of our beliefs, unashamed to proclaim the name of Jesus. There may be people out there wanting to deconstruct it, but you know what? The gospel is still as true today as it was 2,000 years ago. We can't deconstruct the faith. No more than you can deconstruct creation, no more than you can deconstruct your condemnation. No more than you can deconstruct the crucifixion. No more than you can deconstruct your salvation. My friend, hold fast to the truth. Be unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Look forward to seeing you in God's house again Sunday morning. This has been your Daily Dose, a ministry of Faith Baptist Church. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today and click the bell next to the button to sign up for email notifications each time we live stream or release a new video. To learn more about faith, please visit our website, fitinatfaith.com, for more information about our church. Have a great day in the Lord.